Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing good. I don't know if you guys remember this. This is on my Instagram story. I posted this. I literally had a week where I was doing nothing but shaking and crying, shaking and crying. My anxiety was through the roof. And to be honest with you, I feel like it was warranted. God was preparing me for a storm. This, this bloody ice cream thing has been the pain in my backside. It hasn't just been a day of stress, a day, a week of stress. It has been months of stress. I'm still going through stress right now to to deal with it. Don't get me wrong. The video is coming out. Everything's going to be fantastic. Everything's going to be sweet. But there's been a lot of hurdles. And when I say there's been a lot of hurdles, fucking hell. Oh my God, there's been so much hurdles. I have literally spent cried so many tears over this freaking song, over this video. And people have been doing me dirty. So, I mean, you're going to witness all of this. Like, I've done this story time, but I almost need to do another story time. Like, you don't even understand. Like, oh, it's just an absolute mazzoline. It's an absolute mazzoline. Like, right now I'm trying to behave myself because I want my... I want my, my music video to go smoothly. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the test star, the little teaser. Hope you're excited about it. It's going to be the fucking song of the summer. You understand? Goody gang stand up. <laughs> hey, guys. You all right? I haven't got a tripod, so you're going to see this view of me. But basically, this trip has been so mad for so many reasons. So many reasons. The location I'm in, I'm just going to show you the route. Look at that, look at that. Basically, you can even just see, like, this is my view from my window. This red thing. I think I've shown you the view from the front of the door. I'll show you in a sec. But basically, where we are, you're not allowed to shoot professionally. So this whole, unless you get fined or some shit. So this whole trip. We've been shooting um, very, like, subtly or low-key, which had to be low-key the whole trip. And um, we've done an okay job. My cameraman is a little bit, like, chill. He's a bit relaxed, but I'm like, no. <laughs> it says it on the door. I actually have to show you guys the door. It says no filming. But, um... Well, on the last day we've got like a pool scene and then a lady came up and started sunbathing an American lady after like 20 minutes of filming I was like um hello I didn't even do the dancing scene but we're gonna go back in like two hours because um, people don't really swim until about like one two so we're gonna try to go there like maybe 11 30 12 I think we're gonna try to go up there and we're gonna do some quick drone scenes we're really risking it for a chocolate biscuit because after the drone scenes it's, it's like really like people have clocked your filming but once we've done the drone scenes we're gonna stop and then i'm gonna just do solo scenes um which is i think i've got like a blue outfit and like i've got like i've got a blue outfit and i've got like my corset and i would like to do my purple outfit again to be honest but yeah that's it really but yeah the caretaker is black so i feel like he knows what we're doing but because there's not a lot of black people where we are i feel like he's letting us off the power of being black <laughs> but guys i just feel like god has been on my side do you get what i mean i've taken a huge risk coming to a place you're not allowed to film and basically doing it people do do it don't get me wrong i'm not the only person that gets away with it but like the caretaker walks around if you get caught with a professional camera they will ask what you're doing but we I have risked it for a chocolate biscuit so many times and I'm just so proud of myself I'm proud of my team I'm proud of the the the, the content um the first day I didn't really like the scenes but that's because the sun went down when we started filming also I feel like the camera man was kind of learning what I liked and my angles I feel like he knows what I like now like now when he films me I'm like mm. I'm like yes yes it's looking sweet you know the ones you know not like obviously you know when you sh shoot a music video yeah you expect to look like beyonce <laughs> i'm not gonna lie like or doja cat or like yes like but the thing is like because you're not like a polished artist 
it's very difficult to look like them also like you don't have their crew their their makeup crew their lighting the editing you and you don't even even stuff like no offense to them but like they probably have like the perfect diets and like let's be honest you know they have the best surgeons in the world so like even if they get like a little roll they go get that sucked out they have a little botox basically the point is when you see yourself on camera you're like oh <laughs> you're like oh god I'm, it's not giving beyond but i've really tried guys so um i'm really excited the one thing i need to do though even before we do the drone scene is we need to do a little tiktok like oh, there's so much shit i need to do ice cream scenes but to be that's it and then i've got ice cream in my hair but i've got so many outfits that i just like an ice cream cone you'll see that i've got so many outfits i fucking like i think i won't love the video as much as until i get home i fucking love it i love the video it's so beautiful like what else is a perfect location than this it's pink and blue and what the fuck who you no one can have chat for me who goes in with visuals as, as much as me like a f what are we talking about i tried i've tried like i think people need to give me my props but yeah let me show you outside this cameras but this is my view as i go up the stairs i'm gonna show you where one of my scenes is it's literally it's literally just on top of us the, the sun is out but yeah um i hope you love it i don't just want you to love the video i actually hope you like the song um it's my first proper pop song unless you count bad boy as pop but yeah i just hope you like it because i tried <laughs> i really tried so yeah just watch the video over and over again for me you know hit like comment all that good stuff but yeah i just hope you like it but anyway guys peace out i might take you to the sit town with us when we go looking for ice cream but yeah love you Mwah. hey guys hey guys hey guys hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is Lonnie good if this is the first time you ever stumbling on my channel then where have you been where have you been whole you've been missing out it's lit over here and if you are a returning subscriber then I FCS you heavy and I love you so I'm so sorry guys first um, first of all I want to start with the fact that I haven't been posting at all um, <laughs> And it's like, oh my god, like, you know, have you died or some shit? But, you know, it's just because I've been trying to, like, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that I'm trying to sort out. Um, if, if most of this stuff comes to fruition, then I'm going to have a very lit year. I'm going to have a very, very lit year. But sometimes you just have to, like, you have to try and pattern things, you know what I mean? You can't just always be in front because then when we use, um, plan things. So I've been planning stuff behind the scenes. That's why I've been quiet. But I kind of thought, like, you know what? I want to do... Okay, so basically, this week, I'm going to be dropping two story times. This first story time that I'm dropping now is um, about my holiday from hell. So that's going to be what this this story time is. And then in a few days, I'm going to drop... Or even tomorrow, I don't know. It just depends how I feel. I'm going to drop another story time about um, a rapper that I did a thing with. Um, and it's not the one that you guys already know about. It's another one. <laughs> Juicy. But yeah, you know, with me, I just feel like, obviously, don't get me wrong, I've told you guys a lot of stories about my life. But I haven't told you every single story. Obviously, you, you do keep some stuff to yourself. And also, sometimes it's not the right time and place to share a story. So, for the longest time, I feel like I had to deal with the... I had to deal with what I was upset about and what I was heartbroken about and now I'm past that I feel like finally um we can um we can we can move on we can now talk about different things that you know Lani's been through and different story times like there's obviously more to me and there's more stories to my life than that just than that one that one period of my life 
So that's why I'm doing this, because that's why I think the timing is perfect. So obviously, let me not get into that too much, because I know you're going to watch that, because it's, obviously it's like, you lot are nosy. <laughs> so obviously, we want to start with the story time from hell, um, the holiday from hell, sorry, and then you will get the rapper story during the week. So, you know, I hope all of you are having a lovely summer. Um, I don't know what you're doing right now, but if you're getting ready to go out or you're, you know, I don't know, you're, you're about to go out with the girls on a night out or you're about to go on a sexy, hot date or you're packing for a holiday or you're getting ready for work or you're at work, I'm going to tell you what happened to me on holiday because it was actually like a movie. It was mental and it was insane. Now, I got posted on the shade. I'm going to get into all of it. I'm, I'm going to get... I'm gonna go into why I was posting on the shade bar and everything behind that and my thoughts and just everything I've learned. Um, and I don't know, I hope you take something from the story as well. But um, I'm going to try and like hide identities because the people that were helping with my video, they're not like people that are like social media personalities. What I'm talking about are not social media personalities. So I'm not going to talk about them in case like at the end of the day they don't want you know to be bait so but i'm gonna tell my story because at the end of the day like i'm the one that suffered the most i feel that's this is my opinion i feel like i suffered the most especially financially on this trip and i just feel like a lot of people want to judge but they don't they can never walk a day in your shoes a day a minute by the way if you guys think why how, am i not wearing pants um i'm literally just in a leotard guys i have these denim shorts on the floor i will show you I literally have these denim shorts on the floor and I had put them on, on. you know what I mean? I was trying to look like, I feel like what I'm wearing is very, very Nicki Minaj. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I feel like I've seen her wear this outfit. But yeah, I was wearing these denim shorts, but they are so tight, um, which is cool if you're going, if you're going out and you want, you want little sexy shorts. It's a, it's a look like you'll get everyone's number in this however to sit down and talk to you it's fucking up my crotch like it's really like it's up my nun like I had to take it off I'm so sorry like it's just it's not I mean because I'm at my apartment I don't actually have loads of clothes here so um yeah that's why I'm in my leotard forgive me forgive me but yeah this is let's start let's start the story time from the holiday from hell the holiday from hell okay so basically um okay where do i start now let me start with the reason i was going on hol on, on holiday okay because actually channel five someone on, cha on the channel five team actually reached out to me because they were like would you like to talk about this on tv and i just thought i don't know because everyone else won't participate it'll be boring so what was the point of that so i'm just going to tell my story here so the reason we went on holiday in the first place is because we were shooting a music video for me so i have a music video coming out now i have been quiet about this music video because because i okay so i don't know if you guys realize like obviously yes i'm trying to take music seriously seriously but at the same time it gives me joy so i don't necessarily do music necessarily just because i want to um, become a superstar I mean it would be nice but I actually enjoy it and I'm a very creative person so I really enjoy being creative so I enjoy the music side and then I obviously enjoy the visuals the outfits I, I just love it it's an expression of my personality so we were going to we were going to shoot my music video now with this particular music video I wanted to go a little bit more um I wanted a big music video, but I wanted it to be quirky and I wanted it to be very, very me. And I just wanted it to be, I can't explain it until it comes out, but my vision for this video is like to showcase a pop star and a UK rapper, but a pop star more like Katy Perry um, rather than a pop star like, um, I, don't, I don't know, like, rather than like a cool pop star, I wanted it to just be extremely, like, mental, cute, girly, f and fun. So anyway, um, we went to this, okay, so I'm gonna start like this. I don't wanna give too much away, cause then what's the point? 
actually whatever I think you guys already know okay so one of the things I haven't done which I've done in other music videos and I know other people in the UK have done it but I feel like with mo most pop videos you need dancers okay so um, I decided let me fly out some dancers to my location I picked this particular location based on the aesthetics of it. So I, when I did HYC, I chose the mansion. With this video, it's a similar summer vibe, but the difference is the the venue or the place where we're shooting at is extremely quirky and very. Um, it's just very cute. Like you, when you see, when you see, you understand. It's very very cute, and um, a lot of people have actually shot there. Not not music videos, but a lot of like big brands like PLT and stuff. They've done um, fashion photo shoots there. It's just a cool. It's a cool, edgy building. <clears throat> In order to shoot at this at this building, you have to book a stay there. It's an apartment complex. Anyway, so I've I found um, a choreographer. She actually found me because she wanted me to do something with her. But then I told her that I had a video coming out and needed dancers, so we started to collab. So I actually found a so she found me, but I managed to hook up with a choreographer. Um, it was she was a very lovely girl. Um, she found me two dancers, and she made me a lovely dance routine, and that's that. Okay, cool. Now, um, she was sorting out everything. Even though she showed me the dancers, she she chose the dancers and she was the one talking to them. I obviously, I wasn't talking to them. So she's like an agency, essentially. So she was talking to the dancers and things like that. So, um, yeah, so really, I'd only met one of the dancers like literally the day we're flying out. I'd never spoken to these girls really a day in my life. I didn't know what their personalities were like, but it didn't matter because you, at the end of the day, they're there to dance, right? So anyway, we go on this, we go, we meet at um, Luton Airport and obviously in order for them to come on this trip, I have paid for their, their, um, their flights and obviously our transport to the location and I was going to provide like basic food, so like breakfast and stuff and obviously like I'm not going to buy everyone McDonald's but like I would, you know, I'll, I'll buy like pasta and stuff so essentially when you're there in, in theory you don't have to actually spend any money because I would buy water, I'd buy drink, um, I'd buy bread, I'd buy pasta, and pasta sauce but if you want McDonald's and pizza like like I, I don't think I'm obligated to pay for that but obviously if you don't want to spend a penny there was food in the fridge so yeah so anyway let me just start from the point we met. So when we met at the airport, everyone was in good spirit, everyone was good in good, good energy, and we was excited for the video. Do you understand? So the choreographer was coming, the director, and the dancers. So when we are now boarding on the plane to go to this location, um, we then um, kind of... Somebody on the... Somebody who was part of my team... Oh, fuck's sake. Sorry, guys. I feel like this chair's a bit broken. Somebody who was part of my team basically started, dis not started disclosing, but yeah, basically started disclosing. Basically started like saying things that implied or sh 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 um, is the word implied? They started to show that they were uncomfortable with flights. Somebody on my team, so one of these people that I've mentioned. They're uncomfortable with flying. Um, and they made it clear, literally as we're boarding the plane, that it wasn't a mild, um, uncomfortability, if you, if you will, it was severe. And they can become very sick on a plane because they just don't, that flying doesn't agree with them. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say too much because like, the person doesn't apparently want people to know, um, about their stuff. So, you know, I was talking code, but you, you get the gist here. So like basically, they're just not good on flights. And when they, so essentially both these, these people have all been told that this isn't a broad shoot. Nobody put a gun to anyone's head to come on this trip. So essentially, they should have said no to the, to the job when it was offered to them or when it was presented to them. But all these people have come here and then I'm finding out that they can't fly when we're boarding the plane. So anyway, we get on the plane and um, things go um, very bad and the person, there was extreme turbulence. We were, it was basically, when we were going, we had to go through, not where we were going, but unfortunately our journey um, that day just happened to have a lot of thunderstorms. 
I know this because the woman at EasyJet called me to explain. So, like the, ne like the next day. So there was extreme thunderstorms. Extreme thunderstorms. So, um, one of the person on my team who's scared of flying is bugging out um, and is having, um, is basically, I'm going to say they've, they've fallen ill, that's the best way I can put it. They have fallen ill because the plane has severe turbulence to the point where there was a woman on the plane that was a, that was a um, nurse and a lot of other people came to the person's aid because it was so bad. Literally, it was so bad, it was terrifying. Um, it was just really bad, okay? It was, like, really bad. Like, there was, like, I would say maybe even five people trying to stop the person from having their um, illness. Like, that's why I'm going to put it as an illness. You guys can read between the lines. So people are trying to stop the person or calm the person down so that they won't have their um, their illness and they will, like, relax and they can, they can the... the, the they can have an easier flight but it was so bad whatever was happening to them the reaction they were having was so extreme that the nurse told the pilot that it would be in the it would be the safest bet is if um we stop the plane and we emerged an emergency landing to toulouse in france yep so at this point, most people are worried about the person who's ill, and a lot of people are not showing distress. Like they're not, they're not angry at the person, so that they're obviously they, they everyone is concerned about them. Um, oh, Jesus. So when we get to Toulouse, um, the person gets medical attention from some sort of medical team in Toulouse. They come on the plane, they check the person, but unfortunately. Um, the part, the even the people that come on the plane, the French people who are checking to see if the person's fine, they tell us that she is fine and she's fit to fly. She she'll be okay. It, she's just a bit. Um, it's her nerves making her ill. But the pilot ultimately it's the pilot's decision whether he wants to continue with this flight. I'm gonna try. If I, do you know what? I'm gonna try to find the pilot's picture because he was so fucking rude to us. I don't give a fuck. You were so fucking rude. I hope you watched this story time. You were so fucking rude, like to us. Like you were so rude to her. Like bless the girl. She didn't do it on purpose. I just want to make something clear. I do not have any. I don't have a problem with anyone in this story time. I'm just telling a story time. I actually think everybody fundamentally is a lovely person however the trip was shit it was awful so that's what i'm doing i'm telling the story um and i'm just gonna call out what i saw the pilot was horrible to her so um because she basically said that she wanted to fly she had a job she was just um she was just stressed out you know she gets like that with turbulence but she'll be okay it's only an hour left and maybe they could give her some medication so she would fall asleep so she wouldn't she wouldn't be falling ill um, because she falls ill because she basically you know um essentially she, she 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 panics so she asked for medication the pilot said um basically get off my black lap pain and then obviously they looked at um the booking number um so the 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 air hostess gets a piece of paper and is looking at the booking number to see like her to get her passport and all this stuff and then the air hostess basically sees that the person that's booked this trip is it, um name is you know basically lani so um they come up to me and they basically ask me if um me and my team want to get off the plane with her um now this is this this part of the story um, um is probably um, the most debated, or the one that was the most debated on the Shade Barra, not that I give a F about the people on the Shade Barra, you lot don't even check for my videos, you lot are all bastards, but let me get into that bit, cool, let's talk about it, um, and I just want to make something clear, yeah, because this is, this really irks me, but at the same time, I don't actually care what you lot think, I'm, I'm actually sick of you guys acting like you lot are Jesus, because you're not, um, so basically, I want to make something very clear, yeah, I haven't blown. I'm not Dave, bro. I'm not Dave, fam. I'm not Stormzy. Get me? I'm none of these people. 
I'm none of these people, bro. So when you lot are telling me, when, when, when somebody is self-funding their dreams, all this, everything you see, yeah, that I have achieved, obviously is off my own back. Do you get it? Like, I don't have nobody, um, I, like who, 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 well, if I book a studio to, 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 film, to film a video for YouTube, that's on me. If I have to take a trip out to, 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 to film content, that's on me. Everything I film obviously is on me. I still have a nine to five. I don't work in the same place I used to work, but I still have a nine to five. Everything is funded by me. So this same music video, you don't know how, how much this cost me. A lot of you were like, why didn't you get off the plane? First of all, first of all, this is a business trip. And guess who every single penny is um, and guess who's in, responsible for every single penny on this trip? Yes! Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. You're looking at her. I have paid for every single bum on that plane that is coming to work for my video. Every single bum I've paid for. Including COVID tests. When we get there, the cab will... Get, okay, if initially I booked a car. I'm going to get into that. But because the car thing flopped. But the cab, the cab to, the cab to the um, hotel I wanted to go to was 130 euros, bro. One way. And then back. And then the accommodation and then food. And then I have to pay the cameraman. I have to pay the dancers. I have to pay everybody. And you are coming to tell me get off the plane. If we got off that plane and I had to rebook everyone's blood clot flight, it, on top of that, on top of that, I would have had to make everybody do emergency PCR tests. Do you, have, did you guys think about that? Hmm? Did you guys think about that? I would have had, our PCR tests would have expired. You need to, the PCR testing, you, it has to be in a 72 hour window. So that day we're flying, that is the 72 hour window, which is on Saturday fam. So we're flying out on Monday night. By the time the next flight is on Tuesday, we're, we have to get emergency PCR tests. Have you guys looked at the price of an emergency two to three hour PCR test? I'll put it on the screen. I will, oh my phone's right here, let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I found it. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while, it took me a minute because you have to find a clinic. So I found a place that tells you roughly how much all of this stuff costs. If you want express within three hours, it's about ninety pounds. Okay. If it can get, it can go. Okay. If you want an emergency same day appointment and it's full, it can be anywhere near to one hundred and thirty pounds. I've seen that. If I booked emergency um, PCR COVID tests for the people that weren't vaccinated because there was two people vaccinated, I'm not vaccinated. So for the for for me and the rest of the people that wasn't vaccinated, that would have been an extra basically a hundred pounds uh, for the three hour or the you know whatever. I think there's even one that they give you the results in half an hour. That might, that one might be like one eighty because I've seen it before. The point is, if you times that if you times that number by three. Because of the people that went vaccinated. Lani's paying about six bills just for PCR tests. On top of that, I'm going to have to rebook everyone's blood clot flight. So basically, when you know I say get off the plane, this is not a holiday. If I was on holiday and my brethren got kicked off the plane, of course I would have got off the plane. Because even if me and her had to rebook our flights, how much can it be? We have a return. Let's say we'll go to Mexico. We have a return. How much can it be? An extra two bills, extra three, extra four? Come, it wasn't gonna be that. I had five people to pay for. Use your fucking brains. It wasn't gonna be that. It wasn't gonna be four bills. It wasn't even gonna be five. It would have cost me at least another thousand pounds to get every. In fact, you guys are not even considering one more thing. Um, Toulouse is not a popular airport in France. Um, there actually wasn't any flights leaving that same day. It was actually the night time. It was actually like two in the morning or one in the morning. So we would have had to wait for the next day. So what am I gonna do with my team? And if they say to them over oh, the next day, but the next flight's in the afternoon or at night time, we can't just stay in the airport for 10 hours. I would've had to book a hotel for two, two groups of people because hotels are for two people. So I would've had to pay for hotel. I would've had to pay for maybe cab to this new hotel. I would've had to pay for PCR tests and flights. Me, all me, I would've had to pay for all of that. I'm not Dave, bro. I'm not Dave, I'm not, I'm not Dave. I'm not, I'm not Dave. I'm not heavy one. What are you, what are you man talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are you going to give me a grant? All you want to do is judge.
judge me. And I've even seen some girls say, I would rather lose money than leave my friend. Um, with all due respect, she wasn't my friend with all due respect. Um, I booked her for a job. She, lovely girl, by the way. I really like her. I'm not saying this in a bitchy way. I'm just saying she. I, I booked her for a job. We, we, um, I, I really like the girl, but she wasn't my friend. And um, I don't have a grand. I don't have the money. I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. And if you guys want me to have an extra grand before I, before I do stuff in case of emergencies, you guys are going to have to get content and music videos every three years. Because if I have to, in order for me to shoot a music video, if I have to have an um, emergency fund of two and a half grand sitting there in case something fucks up, then guys, you're not going to get videos for, I'm going to have to, you, you're not going to get videos consistently. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Okay, so um, before um, you don't come and judge me, um, let me just say something. Well done to you. Well done to you that you would have got off and you would have paid the grant and you would have been one grand down. That's good for you, innit? I don't have it. I don't have it. Why would I have it? You don't even know. You know people, they like to talk. You don't know my life struggles. You don't know what I'm going through. Right now, yeah, cool. I'm actually okay. But you don't know about my family. There's certain members of my family, not my mum and dad, because my mum and dad are good. But there's certain members of my family that are not, um, they're not, this is not the best time of their life financially. The pandemic really, really affected them. I look after people. That's my point. I look after people. I just don't talk about it. Because I don't want to embarrass people. You know what I mean? You don't want to hurt people's ego. But I look after people. I, um, last month, I sent money to my, my, my cousin in Africa so he could do some football thing. I look after people. I don't waste, I'm not going to waste a grand on that when I have people who actually need my money in my actual life. People who actually need it. Do you understand? It's just easier for you lot to be like, I would have got off the plane. I don't have money to waste. I'm, like I said, I'm not Santander. I'm not. I'm so sorry. Okay, I didn't get off the plane. If that makes me a bitch, then that makes me a bitch. I'm a bitch. What can we do? I'm a bitch. Shoot me. Cancel me, unsubscribe, unfollow. What do you want me to do? I'm just trying to explain to you. I am not perfect. This is the, the thing I want you to, to make clear to you lot. I am not perfect in any way, shape or form. I don't think I'm an angel. I don't think I'm a saint, but I do my best. I do my best, okay? I have goals. The reason I do what I do is because I have goals and I want to reach certain um, targets so I can look after my family. Don't piss me off. Don't piss me off when I'm trying to strive for better for myself and achieve something and you lot are telling me to do something that will jeopardize my dream or my goal. Shut the fuck up. You guys can never, if people talk and talk and talk, who are you to judge me? I couldn't afford it. Okay? And like I said, if I had the money, I'd rather give it to my the family member that I know who at, at the moment is struggling because of the pandemic. Let me tell you something. One of my sisters, yeah, she's studying. She went to uni, but she didn't like her, um, she didn't, she didn't like her, she didn't like her, um, the, the career path she chose. So she decided, she, she decided to retrain. So she's retraining to do like, um, coding and stuff, right? And she studies and works. And she works three days a week and she studies. And sometimes she will stress out and say, oh, like, she doesn't like asking my mom and dad for money, but sometimes she'll stress out. And she'll be like, oh my God, I can't, like, I, like, my bills are too tight because I only work, she only works three days a week. Mum doesn't actually give her money every month on top of... T Basically, because she works three days a week and her bills are of somebody who is a full-time adult, her bills... Because she used to work before, so she, she's attained these bills. So her bills are really high, but she only works three days a week. So my parents subsidise some of her bills and give her money. But sometimes she'll stress and say, you know, she just wishes she could do more, or she sometimes she just needs a bit more, and she feels bad asking my parents, do you not think I want to give my sister money and just say, don't worry about it, it's cool, study, chill, don't worry, I'm good, your sister's got you. Do you not know, think I want that? You don't attempt to waste my money. Like, just shut up, fuck off, like, it's so irritating. If you guys think I'm a bad person and you, and you think I'm a bitch, that's fine. Unsubscribe, bye. I wanted to sh finish my music video and, I ha and, and, and that's what I did. Do, did, did. Does that mean that when she got off the plane, we, I didn't worry about her? Of course I did, I'm a human being. You know, I worried about her and um, she, she was very young, so it wasn't, it just, it just wasn't ideal. And the, the pilot was very rude to her, very rude, she tried to beg to stay on the plane. He was very rude to her. Kicked her off the plane and just, and, and they left her. They, uh, we were under the impression that they were going to look after her and maybe put her on another plane, either back to London or to meet us. But I was assuming back to London, nothing, left her abandoned and there was nothing in Toulouse. 
Um, so then I ended up booking her a flight and um, I think she, she found herself, yeah, she found herself a hotel. Now, the other part of this, the next nightmare part of this, so I'm already stressed out, so because you have to understand I've got a budget and now I spend a bit more of my budget because I'm like, oh God, I had to get another hotel, which wasn't in my, it's just extra money that you don't need to be paying for. So we've landed, and because we have landed late, and the reason we've landed late is because the, the, the plane was diverted to go to Toulouse. Because we have landed late, the um, car company, oh guys, I'm so sorry, I, need to put, I really want this car company to go down. They are bastards. The car company that I rented the car from, they asked if they could have my flight number so they could track my flight. If they were tracking my flight, they would have seen that my, my flight was delayed. But they didn't care. So what they did is they just left. When we got there, the, the, the office was completely closed. Shut us down. Shut us down, they just, they just went. Can you imagine? What was the point of giving you my tracking number? So when we got there, the, 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 the um, car that I rented and I paid for wasn't there. It was gone. They had, they, had, they had gone home. So I couldn't even get the car. Can you imagine? They just went, even though they had... You know someone asked me, oh what, you should have told them that you were going to arrive late. How? When we were in Toulouse, I tried to get on my phone. Sometimes when you're in a plane, you don't have no service. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? People are like, I feel like some of the people just talk, but they're not thinking with their brains from your perspective. I couldn't do anything. But they had, I provided them with the tracking of my flight and they went home. Shut us down. Shut us down. Shut us down. So I was thinking, okay, like I had to get us a cab. I, the cab was 130 bloody U, um, euros, maybe pounds is about a bill, but Oh, Jesus. So, you have to take the L. What is it? You have to take the L. So anyway, we, we must have got to um, the location. Now, I want to make something very, 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 very clear. When I booked the accommodation, I booked it and that was it. It just said booked. Now, this isn't a hotel. This is an apartment complex. Now, when you go to Airbnb, one sec. When you go to Airbnb, usually when you um, book your Airbnb, I think there's usually instructions of how to get your key. So, some people, you have to understand that it's their home or whatever. So they will say, okay, what time do you arrive? I will meet you downstairs and la 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 la, outside the laundry, whatever, whatever. Or I'll meet you in the apartment, whatever. The point I'm trying to make is usually they make arrangements with you. I have booked loads of Airbnbs. I know this, okay? Um, so they just didn't say nothing to me. So then I emailed them. I said, oh, hi, how do I check in? Cause like, duh. Um, cause like, I wasn't sure if they had a reception and I Googled it. I actually Googled the reception. There was no reception. And where we were going, there was no reception. So then I was like, how do we check in? So they're like, they like to us, if you arrive after 8 PM, we will leave you a code. So I emailed back and I said, cool. I arrive after 8 PM. My flight arrives after midnight in your country. I've already booked a flight, I know this. So can you leave us the code? Eh. Eh. And you have to remember, most people would maybe ask for a refund, cancel, book something else, and then, you know, try and get a refund because the people haven't given me my code. I don't have that option, bro. Guess why? Because the whole reason we're going on this trip is to film in that accommodation because of the, we're going for the aesthetics. I've got a choice. The reason I'm coming to this country is for this building, bro. I'm coming for this fucking building. So what are we talking about? So I can't, I can't cancel. I have to put up, I have to put up and shut up. Do you get where I'm coming from? So basically I must have been, so basically we get there and I'm hoping they email me by the time we land because I have sent them about, at this point maybe about three emails chasing for the code. We land, I look at my emails, nada, nothing. And the, the cab takes us to the, the location. When we get to the location, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, trying to call her, trying to get the attention of like a caretaker or some shit. Nothing, it's silent. There's lights on, but no one's coming outside. No one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. So I'm thinking, shit, we're homeless. And everyone's looking at me like Lani. And I'm like, and I'm looking at my emails like, what did I miss? What did I miss? And I'm just embarrassed and frustrated and tired at this point. And I'm just thinking, this is the holiday from hell, bro. So then, then 
we get a cab into so it's about five minutes in the car okay it's not even five minutes maybe three minutes to the town maybe 10 minute walk so we get in a cab because i've got a suitcase and we're gonna pull my suitcase for 10 minutes and it's not 10 minutes when you've got a heavy suitcase it's probably take me 20 minutes to walk into town and i'm tired i've been on a plane like and i've been i'm just tired so we get a cab into the city center and i ask the cabman just to take us to any hotel maybe i can so at this point guys i just want to let it make it clear that it's about three in the morning so i'm I'm like just take us to a hotel he takes us to a five-star establishment mm -hmm. a five-star establishment so we go in there and I'm I basically say to the guy we're homeless um, I booked an apartment they haven't left us the, the check-in details because it's self checking we're fucked we have nowhere to go so um, how much for a room this guy turns around and tells me it's 177 pounds per night and that's two people per room and there's four of us so i'm gonna spend uh, about four bills remember it's three in the morning and um the, uh, what, so where we want to go you have to remember that they're not there because it's night time but most people start work at what time nine ish so in theory i was i was in theory going to be paying this for about six hours so i was thinking four bills for six hours that's some so then I was like, hey, maybe help me find another hotel. So something, he was a very nice man. Something he explained to us was that um, he explained that the city doesn't operate on like a 24 hour thing. Can you imagine? In, in, in summer holidays, it's peak season. They don't operate on a 24 hour thing. Most things there is self check-in. Most. People don't, it's, it's, it's not open all the time. So most things there is self-checking. You have to check yourself in. And it is what it is. So he said the only people that operate on a 24 hour flex or whatever is mainly the four and five star establishments. So everyone's price, cause he looked for me, everyone's price was the same. Maybe a bit lower by like a tenner, but everyone's price was similar. If I wanted to book it right there and then, maybe if I booked it in advance, of course I probably would have got a discount. You know, when you go on holiday, you probably do get a discount. So £100 a night, or 150 a night, but right there and then. And guys, I have no problem spending £177 a night to stay in an establishment, but not for six hours. That is my point. For six hours, you must be mad. What? You must be crazy. So then, um, he, he, he basically says, let me look at your email because this is very strange. What's happened to you is very strange. Let me look at your email. So I show you my email. At the bottom of the email, there is an address. It doesn't, it doesn't say this is an address. It just, it just has an address. It's just like, you know, like um, almost like a header and a footer. So at the bottom of the email, he sees an address and he goes, ah, this is where you need to go. He Googles it. And he was like, I, I get it. He goes, so you see how I said with Airbnb, usually they might meet you there or you have to go somewhere and pick it up. Like when I filmed HBIC, we actually had to go to a restaurant, a 24 hour restaurant to pick up our keys. We, it, we didn't pick it up at the apartment. We had to find the apartment on our own, bro. Because I remember when I, did an, uh, when I went abroad before, I went to an office first. I got this a lot. I went to an office to pick up my key and then they took us there. They, the, the, the office actually took us in the cab to the villa that we had booked through them. They took us there, but this was different. This was to totally different. They, um, they, what am I saying? Yeah, so this was different in the sense that it was still an office, but they had not told us how to check in. They hadn't left us a code. So he, when he Googled it and he Googled the business, it said the opening hours online on Google and they said that they start, um, they start working from 8 a.m. So at this point, I've been talking and looking for, for hotels with him for about an hour. So now it's about 4 a.m. So he was like, you've got four hours until they open and then you can get your key to go to your accommodation. So I'm not gonna pay 100 177 pound times two for four hours it's not gonna happen bro so um i just begged the man can we just stay in your lobby till four, till eight and he said yes mm -hmm. he took pity on us we slept in that lobby he gave us water and fruit like we were peasants and homeless people he, he was so nice to us like he was so nice to us like you know he took pity on us 
And I just want to thank you are such a good person. If I can find your hotel and send you an email, you are a brilliant person. If I, if I blow, I want to send that man um, some money. He is kind. He's so thank. I, I'm, I'm not saying this for banter. I just want to keep it real with you, yeah? I want to keep it above with you guys, yeah? Um, this trip was really stressful, guys, okay? It was really stressful. And um, I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best and um it's so it was just everything was going wrong everything was going wrong and I'm just trying to create beautiful visuals and obviously because I am hellbent on this location and they're so ghetto the way they, they manage is so ghetto everything was going wrong and this man in this lobby this is a five star establishment he let these random people who hadn't booked this place stay in his lobby we sat there we made it look untidy we were literally sleeping in his lobby like we were like some of my people weren't even hiding behind like because like, there was different parts of it they weren't even in the corners they were like in the beginning bit making it look very untidy untidy and unsightly and this man he was so nice he let us sleep there he gave us water and fruit From the bottom of my heart, I, I, you're probably never going to see this video. Um, I, I, need, I probably need to find this guy's email. From the bottom of my heart, for somebody who was so stressed out, super, super stressed out, you were the angel I needed. You were the angel I needed. I just want to. I just. I just. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for that. Honestly. Yeah, that man, that man is a good man. Honestly, guys, I was so stressed. You're a good man. You're a good person. Thank you so much. I hope God blesses you for your kindness. I was so stressed. I didn't have the money. People say that people in European countries are all racist. We were all black. We just got off a plane, we looked rough. And this man let us stay in his lobby. You are a kind man. And he gave us this like five star water. It wasn't just water from the thingy, it was this five star water. He got um, the security guard to get us water and fruit. Let us use the toilet, let us sleep. Because the world is so bad, you just don't expect people to be kind, you know? And when people are kind, it can touch you. He was a kind man. So I want to thank you so much for that. And I pray for your happiness. But I need to find him, guys. What a lovely, gorgeous man. I've got a lump in my throat. I'm going to some water. I just sat there and deeped it. That guy, at the time, I was stressed, but... I've never sat down and really thought, this moment I'm talking to you guys, I'm, I really sat down and I thought about it. I thought about him. That was nice of him, you know. You can't take things, you can't take things for granted in life. Don't take things for granted in life. That was kind. That was really kind of him. So. Um... I find at 8 a.m. we get a cab, literally round the corner. <laughs> it was so close, but we get a cab and we um uh we get a cab and we um go to the we go to this office to pick up the key. There was no one there. 
we got there about maybe i don't know what time we got there but maybe just after 8 8 or 2 no one was there so we thought maybe we're a bit early people are a bit late for work sometimes so let's wait so we're like yeah let's wait a bit let's wait a minute you know so we're waiting we're waiting we're waiting we're waiting 20 minutes pass nothing half an hour passes nothing on the door it actually said that they started at 8 30 and closed at 9 30 but i thought i don't believe that because then why does it say eight to eight on your on your um website and remember he said if you arrive after eight he said after eight then we can't give you the key so i was so confused i was like this isn't making any sense this is not making any sense so i was like you don't start at eight so then I decided to take a little walk. I take a little walk around the corner. None of the shops are open. So I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe people open the sh their shops at nine. But you have to remember, guys, I'm gambling at this point. I haven't got a clue. So um, I go back to the place and then luckily, thank God, there's a pizzeria next door and the man who owns that pizzeria is doing stuff. Obviously, I don't think anyone wants pizza at nine in the morning. Well, maybe people do. <laughs> But I think like he's just doing stuff for the business, you know, cleaning, like just sorting out bits. So I go up to him and I say, do you know who like works in this office? And he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, where are they? And he doesn't really understand what I'm saying, but I think he understands that I want the people that work there. And immediately I ask him this. Um, I think I said, what time do they start? What time do they start? And he goes, nine, nine, nine. Great. So I'm like nine in the morning. Cool. It's not nine yet. It's like maybe 10 minutes to nine. So I'm like, amazing. Immediately I ask him this, there's this random man walking a dog. So he's like, hola, you know, he's speaking, um, he's speaking Spanish. Hola, mama, 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 nana, mama, 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 mama. Speaking to the guy, mama, 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 pointing at me. The guy comes up to me and he goes, oh, oh, you, you have, uh, you've booked accommodation. I say, yeah, I booked accommodation for last night. So I tell him, we've been homeless. Where, well, bro, we've been homeless. We have had nowhere to stay. Like we arrived last night and you didn't leave us a code. He goes, oh, sorry, sorry. So he calls his brother. He calls his brother, puts his brother on a loudspeaker, and he tells the brother the situation. The brother is very calm, but I know you can't be serious. In my head, I'm like, you can't be serious. There's no way you guys think this is cool. Everyone's very calm and acting very nice, but I'm like, you, you know you fucked up, right? You can't do this to people, you can't. What? What? Because the brother first goes, do you want a refund? What? Do I want a refund? Do I want a refund? The, only, the reason I am here is so I can be in that accommodation, so that I can film there. <sighs> no, I don't want a refund. No, we are here. We are going to film. No, I do not want one. I want to film. As I should. What are we talking about? Do you want a refund? No. Why the f would I want a refund? Why? Make it make sense. So he then goes to me. Um, he then goes to me. Um, okay, okay. Um, um, he was like, okay, okay. We we give you we give you key. So he even offers us a ride there. They don't give you rides usually. He takes us in his like banged up car. It's it's dust. I'll put a picture in it because I've got a picture of it. Dust everywhere. He takes us to accommodation. When we get there now, um, he's given our room away. So then he's like, I can give you another room. So I said, cool. So they, and they eventually give, a, give us another apartment. They feel so bad that they give us water and they go and get, give us this big bag of oranges. And the dad then takes pictures with me to send to his son because he wants to prove to his son that we're okay and we're not too mad at him because um the dad is the one that fucked up um he, sorry i've skipped a bit he told me on the phone it was my dad i'm so sorry, sorry my dad had an operation my dad is forgetful my dad forgot to give you a key mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we get to our accommodation and yeah we get to our accommodation and um, after, yeah, they, after they clocked up, they gave our room away, they give us another frigging uh, um, uh, um, apartment and they give us oranges on water. Then I say to them, now this has to be the compromise, it? it has to be the compromise. Then I say to them, 
I need to, so I'm going to check out on Thursday at 10 in the morning. I said, I don't want to check out at 10 in the morning. I want to check out later, like 7 p.m. Now, really, this is cheeky, but it's not cheeky when you made me homeless. So, basically, they don't agree to it straight away, but they agreed to it later. They knew they had to. And then one of the days we found out that the oven wasn't working, the girls wanted to make pizza, they brought us chicken and chips. Like, it was just, it was bad. But they were so lovely that you can't really be mad at them. You know people are so sweet? Like, the granddaddy was so cute. He was so cute, like, he was so cute. Um, he was like, 